let's get started. Um, this is, hello, CM Tanda. This is our very last lesson in this course. So sorry, Morgan, and who else was new? Naledi and yeah. Lisa Sharon Kanya, Chadia. Chadia as well. Um, this is actually the very last lesson in this particular course. But don't stress, everything is recorded. Um, so all these lessons are available um, to you. Also, the lessons that we gave last year on these topics are also available to you as well. So um, <clears throat> all you have to do is log into the website. Um, maybe you lend if you can find the 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 link, the yeah, URL to where they are. You can just yeah. pop it into the chat at some stage or whatever. Um, yeah. But you're welcome to go back and go and watch these lessons if you have time. Um, so it might be a little bit difficult for you to follow on on what's going on today because everybody else is, has been doing this. If you've done it at school, then it might be a little bit better. Um, mm. But yeah, as I say, you've you've sort of missed out on the teaching that we've, Yulene and I have been doing up to this point. Okay, all right, well, let's get started. Um, again, the questions that I'm doing with you today are questions that come out of NSC papers. So these are the sorts of things that you can expect as well at the end of this year, obviously not identical, but you know, it gives us a good idea. So in this particular case here, what they've done is that they have combined two graphs together. So the graph of f of x equals minus x plus three with a log graph, so log two x. And the first thing that they want us to do is sketch the graphs of f and g, clearly showing all intercepts with axes. OK, so we know that when we sketch, we've got to show important points like turning points and intercepts with axes, et cetera, et cetera. Or not that there are any turning points on these graphs. There aren't. But those are the sorts of things that we are expected to show. All right, so that's the first question. We need to sketch the graph, uh, ske sketch both of these graphs, and we can see that it's out of four marks. So this, hopefully, is an easy question for all of us. If they asked you, um, not if they, when they expect you to draw the graph of f of x, and I'd like to hear from you guys, you tell me what I would need to do here, all right? Um, how would I determine the intercepts with the axes for f of x? How would I do that? How would I determine the intercepts with the axes for the graph of f of x. Can anybody tell me? So you can either unmute and speak, we can put it into the chat. Okay, so Tundleweta says for the x-intercept, let y be equal to zero. Okay, and Tlantla says three is the y-intercept. Yes, good. So we wouldn't need to solve for that in Tlantla. That's quite right. Amo, you've said the same thing. Okay, so three is the y-intercept. Absolutely. So we're not going to waste our time solving for things that are already given to us. But absolutely, Fahin, yes, for the x-intercept, we want to let y be equal to zero. So that would be our first step. Okay, if we may, let's just write that down. Okay, so in 6.1, we're going to say 0 equals negative x plus 3. And when we take our x over to the other side, let's just move this down a little bit. We would say that x would be equal to, so x has changed on, x would be equal to 3. So that means our x-intercept is at 3 and our y-intercept is at 3. Let's grab a pair of axes and draw them so long. Oh no, that's the wrong. Okay, let me just get rid of that because otherwise it becomes a bit irritating. And let's draw ourselves a set of axes. Okay, there we go. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is draw our straight line graph. Okay, so let's get a straight line. And please notice, Matrix, I'm not worrying about putting um, numbers on my axes. All right, draw the graph first and put the, the intercepts with the axes in afterwards. Okay, that is the easiest way to do this. All right, so we know that this graph has a negative gradient. All right, there we go. Let's just get rid of whatever that was. So somehow. Please stay on mute, guys. Okay, and let's label that as F. And we know that this point over here is 0 and 3. And we know that this point over here 
is three and zero. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's go back and look at the other graph. All right, so now this is the graph of g of x equals log two x. How are we going to determine the intercepts with the axes? Well, mind you, there would only be one x, one, sorry, I'm giving it away now, only one um, intercept with an axis here for this particular function. How would we do that? Bear in mind, guys, that it is a log graph. What is it going to look like? And how would we find its x-intercept? Yes, I'm going to go for it. Amu, you're welcome to unmute and speak. I can see Amu's got her microphone off. I can't hear you, Amu. Okay. Yeah, I also cannot hear Amu. Amu, it should also... maybe your computer's, because uh, it's not audio problem. It should be your computer's, either can the you... volume or something is going on there. But we hope that you can hear us and you can put your answer in the chat. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you hear me now? Oh, there we go, Amu. Yes, we can hear you yes. now. Go for it. So I think, ma'am, you're going to have to put it in exponential form. And then I think it's going to be 2 to the power of x. So it's going to be y is equal to 2 to the power of x. And then you're going to have to switch the values of y and x. And so it's going to be x is equal to 2 to the power of y. And then because um, we're finding the x intercept, we're going to make y equal to 0 and x is going to equal to 1. Absolutely. So that's actually something that you can learn off by heart. All right. So all, all the metrics, you can actually learn this off by heart. It's always going to be like this for you with every single log function. All right. The reason for this is because, as you said, if you consider uh, the inverse of this, which would be uh, y equals 2 to the x, its y-intercept is always going to be 1, because when we write y equals 2 to the power of 0, we're going to get 1 as our answer. So what was our y-intercept on the inverse is going to become our x-intercept on our uh, logarithmic function. So our x-intercept is always going to be 1. Okay, so <clears throat> that's what we would need to show. All we've got to do now is we've got to get the shape correct, right? So our original log function, I'm just going to pop that over here. Our original log function being the line y equals 2 to the x would look like this, right? So if you've now reflected this over the line y equals x, your graph is, oh, goodness me, gracious me, it shouldn't touch the, it's going to look something like that. All right, so it's going to look something like this. Okay, and that over there would be the point one and zero. Okay, so it no longer has a y-intercept, it now has an x-intercept. The y-axis is now its asymptote, whereas with the inverse, it was the x-axis that was the asymptote. Okay, so that's what that would look like. Is everybody happy? With that, are we all good? Any questions? Good stuff. Okay, so I would imagine here what they would probably do is give you a mark for the shape and a mark for the x-intercept and here a mark for probably also the shape, the fact that it's decreasing and then the intercepts as well. Okay, so that one was out of four. All right, let's go and have a look at the next question. So they want us to write down the equation of the inverse of g in the form y equals. Well, we've actually already done that, haven't we? So in 6.2, let's just... Get this down. So in 6.2, we're going to write down the inverse. So that would be y equals 2 to the x. All right, that was out of two marks. Um, maybe what we should have done. Sorry, let's just be thorough here. Is if g of x is equal to log base 2 to the x, 
So if y is equal to log base 2x, we will need to switch x and y. And therefore, y would be equal to base 2 to the x, like so. OK, and then we've been thorough in terms of our answer. OK, now on to the slightly more difficult question. So you can see the side of 10, all right, if you are able to answer these first two questions, which um, is what we would consider to be our level one, level two types of questions, we've got six out of 10, right? So that's 60% for this particular question. If we want to get more than that, we have to be able to access these slightly more challenging questions over here. So let's see if we can do that because we've been doing really well up to this point. Okay. So now they say to us, explain how you will use question 6.1 and or question 6.2 to solve the equation log base 2, 3 minus x equals x. Okay, so let's just go and break this down, all right? First of all, what does log base 2, 3 minus x equals x? What does that actually mean for us? Does anybody have any idea? What does the left-hand side of the equation mean? Anyone got any ideas? Can we see a relationship between the information that they've given us and what we see here? If you look in the brackets, what do you notice? What do you see inside the brackets? There is three minus X. So where else do we have a negative X and a positive three? Exactly, Simon Gengler, exactly, exactly. So we all know by now that <clears throat> we can switch terms around. So in other words, if I write something like, um, one minus three, for example, it's okay for me to switch the order of these, all right? If I write minus three plus one, I'm still getting the same thing on time. I'm still gonna get minus two as my answer. So if I write f of x as minus x plus three or as three minus x, it really means exactly the same thing, all right? So what they are referring to in the brackets over here, okay, must be related to our straight line somehow, right? Remember guys, when we write something in logarithmic form, we write it as log base number is equal to our exponent. Okay, so that's what it means when something has been written in logarithmic form. So if we apply that to what it is that we're seeing over here, we can kind of rearrange this to understand what it means a little bit better. Okay, so in 6.3, what we can do is we can say, okay, two is our base. X is our exponent. All right, and our number in this case is three minus X. So in other words, we've got two to the X is equal to negative X plus three. Right, that's what it means. So now that we've rearranged it and we've got it into a form that we actually understand, now we can scrutinize what's on the left and what's on the right hand side. What graph is two to the X and how is it related to G? Fahin, you're welcome to unmute. Why we equal to two X is gonna become an exponential graph. Correct. And the direction I think and the direction I'm a little bit stuck here. Can you just help me up? But just to sure. So it's an in, so it's an increasing function. Yes. It's an increasing yes. function. It's increasing. Okay. It is. It is an increasing function. Absolutely perfect. Well done. All right. Hundred uh, percent. I don't know if there was somebody else who had their hand up. I thought I saw another hand go up. 
Uh, there we go. So Amu is saying exponential graph. Sharon is saying exponential, absolutely. So two to the X, right, is an exponential function, like you guys have said, and it is the inverse of G. All right, so in other words, what we are doing in order to be able to answer this question, we are using the inverse of G and we are making it equal to F. Okay, so in order to solve this, we are using the inverse of G because two to the X is the inverse of G. So we will use the inverse of G and the line and F in order to be able to solve. Okay, so that's what they actually wanted from us here. All right, so it's again, this is something that's quite unusual because we don't normally get asked questions where they ask us to explain in words, but obviously part of this would be using some numbers as well. All right, so where would they give us marks for something like this? I would imagine it would be for rewriting it in this form and then saying that we're going to use the inverse of G and the graph of F in order to be able to answer our question. Okay, now they want us to write down the solution to this particular problem. All right, so write down the solution of that. So where will these two graphs intersect each other? Masejo, I can't hear you. Do you want to say that again? I was saying, can you please repeat 6.3? 6.3, okay. It is a little bit of a difficult thing to understand, all right? So it's the relationship between the inverse function and our straight line. All right, so we just go back here again. Let's just get rid of that. And let's just examine what we've got, right? So they've given us log base number equals exponent. Okay, so in other words, if we rewrite that, okay, we would have two our base to the power of x is equal to our number. Our number is minus x plus three. All right, so I'm just taking that and I'm rewriting it in exponential form, okay, from logarithmic form. Does that make sense to you? Okay, and then what we end up with here is the graph of f of x, and this is the graph of the inverse. Okay, so we're going to use the inverse of G and F in order to be able to solve this particular problem. Okay, so yeah, if you feel like this is a difficult one to understand, it's difficult on purpose. Okay, so yeah, don't, don't stress about it too much, but I just wanted to show you things like this as well, because, you know, this is the sort of thing that could potentially come up. All right, so now what they want us to do is find the solution. Yes, I see there are hands. Am I clear? Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? I'm fine, thank you. Um, for question 6.4, do we have to do a sim simultaneous equation to figure out the solution? No. In question 6.4, it just says write down. Okay. okay. And can you see here, it's also, it's only out of one. Mm. So it's gonna, it's, it has to be something that's fairly simple. Okay. okay, I mean, maybe not, maybe when I say simple, what I mean is, is maybe conceptually, it's a difficult question to answer, but there's not a whole lot of working out that needs to take place in order for us to be able to get the answer. Okay, okay. all right, no problem. Pleasure. Zinclair, do you want to ask a question? Ma'am, um, um, before you answered um, the question for 6.3 about repeating it, you were asking about the point of interception for the graph, and I was going to answer that it was, according to the graph you drew, it was 1 into 0. Okay. All right. Perfect. Thank you very much. So you, are you saying that's the coordinates at the point of intersection between these two? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Amu, what were you going to say? 
Okay. Actually, I was, oh. sorry, someone, please can please can we stay on mute unless we're talking? Sorry, I'm gonna go for it. Oh, uh, ma'am, today actually I was working with a uh, like a problem like this and I couldn't figure it out at all. So, ma'am, are you gonna like work through it? Like, are you gonna do the yes, uh, yes, X? I'm just. Yes, yeah, 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 absolutely. Oh. I just haven't got there yet. <laughs> I, was, I was taking questions. So it's fine. I'm going to do it right now. Okay. I'm just going to just answering the people's questions and then I'm going to go through it. Okay. Teddy, you the last person with the hand up. What did you want to ask? I'm sorry, ma'am, to waste your time. Um, is it fine if I ask again ma'am, to do this or later? It's fine. I'll tell you what I know. I'm not wasting not time. No, 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 that's fine. I'm sure that there's not just you that's probably confused by this. I'm sure there are a lot of people that find this one difficult to understand. So don't mind going through it one more time with you. It's not a okay, problem. So. Okay, yeah. all right. So I'm just yeah. going to go through it one more time and then we're going to talk about how we do 6.4 and then we're going to move on. Okay, so in other words, let's just get rid of that. Can we all see that as far as the way that this has been written, it has been written in logarithmic form. So when something is written in logarithmic form, we know that it means the log of whatever the base is, number equals our exponent. Okay, so in other words, where we see the word log, that's this. Whatever number appears over there, that's our base. So there's our base. This over here is our number. And let's just get a different color. Um, let's go with that green. This over here is going to be our exponent. OK, so. <clears throat> What we could then do is rewrite that in exponential form. So remember, when we write things in, in exponential form, we write it with the base to the exponent. And that is going to be equal to our number, whatever our number is. Right. So that's what I'm doing with this. OK, so I'm taking the 2 and that's my base, taking the x. That's my exponent, and I'm making it equal to the number, and the number in this case was our 3 minus x or minus x plus 3. All right, so that's how I have re rewritten it, okay, is using those rules for when I rewrite something from log form into exponential form. Okay, that's where, that's where it's coming from. Okay, so now when I look at this and they're asking me to find a solution to these two, all right, it is because um, I am using the inverse of g, that's the 2 to the x, and I'm using f of x. Okay, so they've said here, right, there's g, our log graph, there's f of x, our straight line graph. So explain how we'll use either of those to solve the equation. All right, so it is the inverse of g, and it is f of x, the point of intersection. All right, and that's what, um, um, sorry, I forget who who logged on, but who spoke to me, but somebody said uh, how we would find the solution to these two. All right, so if we were to imagine what this graph of 2 to the x would look like, and I want to know actually how you knew where the point of intersection would be, what the point of intersection was. Let's just get the graph on here. It would look something like that. Okay, so how are we going to know where these two intersect with one another. Somebody told me that. Who was it? Can you remember, Yulinda? We spoke, we recently spoke to, was it Naledi? No, I'm not sure who it was. The one that was asking a question. Mm. Some Someone said that they, they, they knew the answer to this. And I said, Amu. yes, that's great, perfect. But was it, was it Amu? Okay, all right. So. Okay, Amu, do you know how you got the answer? Can you explain to us how you did that?
Hi, Amo. Amo, you still need to open your volume up again because we cannot Ma'am. hear you if you are talking. There we go. I'm saying it was Zinke who. Oh, was it Zinke? Oh, that's right. It was Zinke. Okay, so yeah. Zinke, how did you work out that the x coordinate would be one? How did you do that? Um, ma'am, I looked at the graph that you sketched that you sketched on the previous question before. Okay. And yes, I saw those coordinates one into zero, but it looks like maybe it's on the wrong point. Ma'am. Okay. All right. Well, well, you were onto something. All right. And the reality of the situation is, is that in matric, all right, we don't learn how to solve for x as an exponent and x as a normal variable. I mean, there is a way for us to be able to do that, but we don't learn how to do that in CAPS at um, grade 12 level. So really what you would need to do is you would need to look at the left-hand side and you'd need to look at the right-hand side and you'd have to say to yourself, what can I let the value of x be so that the left and the right balance one another out? Okay, because remember this x over here, has to have the same value as that x over there. Plus, we know that this point of intersection would have to take place in the first quadrant, where x and y are both going to be positive. All right, so the easiest way to actually do this is as follows, all right? We know that it's got to be positive, right? It's got to be a positive number because we're in the first quadrant. So it's not going to be where it's equal to zero because then it would be on the y-axis. So if we choose the first number that's bigger than zero, one, for example, is it true if we say two to the power of one, we'd end up with two. If we say negative one plus three, we would also end up with two. All right, so one is actually what satisfies our equation, okay? It makes the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. And this is what they want from you. They want you to write down where x is equal to one. Now we've actually gone and solved the equation. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? So yeah, any questions at this point? In Santla, yes. Uh, afternoon, ma'am. Afternoon. Um, I just wanted to ask, ma'am. So, uh, a positive uh, exponential graph, uh, is on the right side of the, of the y uh, line. Yes. So, in other words, remember we're talking about the solution between the inverse, the blue line, all right, mm -hmm. and the pink line. Okay, how would we find the solution? So in other words, what Zintle was pointing out to us, it's this point of intersection over here. Let me just put a there. They're wanting us to solve the equation for that point of, of uh, intersection. So really what they want from us is they want to know what is the value of X at that particular point. Look, my graph hasn't been drawn 100% um, accurately, but that, that, that doesn't matter. It's not, that's, not the end of, that's not the end of the world. I mean, I wouldn't be able to read a solution off my graph, for example, okay? But really what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to look at the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I know that my answer for x has to be a positive number because I can see that this point of intersection is in the first quadrant. Okay, so it can't be zero because they don't intersect one another on the y-axis. So it's either got to be one or two or three or something like that. All right, so in this case, it would actually be where it was equal to one. All right, and then the left would equal the right. Okay. All right, so those of you that are saying explain, will it always equal to one? Zintle, what you can say is that the um, x-axis for your logarithmic function, that will always have an x-intercept at one. That, that's always true. But you can't assume that these graphs are always going to cross over one another at one. In this case, it does. All right, but not that wouldn't be the case for every single graph. Okay, so yeah, don't don't learn things like that off by heart. All right. Yeah, this is, is very difficult to understand. Okay, so that's why, guys, it's so important that we can do the first few questions. All right, so if we can get ourselves six out of 10 for this section, and we're not too worried about these two questions over here, then it's not the end of the world. Okay, but yes, it is, it is much more difficult for us to understand. Okay, Amasli, what was your question? Um, ma'am, for questions like 6.4, you said um, it could be any number along the number line. 
So when you're trying to figure that out, um, do you just keep subbing in like the numbers for the value of x? Essentially, I might say, but you can see it's only out of one. So, you know, they didn't want you to sort of sit there forever trying to figure out what would, um, what would the left hand side be, what would the right hand side be. Okay, they've made it, they've made it, it's, it's like an easy difficult question in that regard, because x would be equal to one. So, you know, okay. if, if one didn't work, then you could try two. So, you know, but you can see two is not going to work because two squared would give you four. And over here, if you had minus two plus three, you're not going to get four as an answer, you're going to get one as an answer. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, no problem. All right, so let's go on and go and have a look at another type of question. So now this question that I've selected here also comes out of a metric paper. And I thought I would do this this evening because we said that we were going to be talking about functions and inverses. But I haven't actually done any functions questions. Well, I've done inverse functions with you, but I haven't done any functions questions with you. So I thought let's do this. Um, and then at least we have touched on the parabola, which is something that is completely different. Again, your teachers in matric, they're not going to teach you any of this um, this year. They're just going to expect you to know what it is that you've learned from last year. So it's really good for you to, to keep revising these concepts because this is out of a lot. You can see these questions on inverses are not out of much. This one was out of 10. Whereas with this particular question over here, this is out of 18. And of course, you're also going to have a question on the hyperbola as well. Okay, so for your functions do count for a large part of paper one. So in this particular question, they have given us two graphs. f of x is a parabola minus 2x squared plus 4x plus 16. And g of x is a straight line. It's the line y equals 2x plus 4. The other thing that they tell us is that a and b are the x intercepts. So we can see that down there. And c is the turning point. All right. Now, we can see in front of the x squared, there is a negative 2. So that explains why the graph is sad face. All right, let's go and have a look at the questions because there's not really much more information that's been given. The first thing that they want us to do is calculate the coordinates of A and B. All right, so A and B are the x-intercepts. Do you guys know how to do that without me telling you? The answer to that should hopefully be yes. Do we know how to calculate the coordinates of A and B? Ah, there we go. Touch yes. it. Yes, lovely. That's there we go. Yes. All right. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, so God. that's three marks. Very nice. Go for it, guys. Go for it. So work out the coordinates of A and B. I'm going to give you four minutes, and then you should be able to do that. Let's go, guys. We can do this. We can figure it out. Okay, so we've got some answers already. That's good. Sure, in Sunshine, not a problem. Um, maybe what I must do is just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Now you can see the whole graph.
Okay, nice everybody, that's perfect. Okay, so now the next question. They want us to calculate the coordinates of C, the turning point of F. Do we know how to do that as well? Do we know how to calculate the coordinates at the turning point? Do we remember how to do that? Yes, good everybody. Favor says yes, Fahin says yes, Amatle says yes, awesome. Okay, so I want you to calculate the coordinates at C. I'm just going to do the solution to 5.1 over here as well. Let's go, my people. I love how the boy is just so concentrated with the earphones and <laughs> sitting on the table. Okay, so we had lots of people giving us those answers. So that was really nice to see. Well done. Okay, Faber's got an answer already. Okay, Latani and Tatu are saying the same thing as Faber. So is Tondoetsu, Tsehofatso, Anati. Nice, guys. Yes, Maseho. Good. Yes, Omoholo. Yes, Sharon. Good job, everybody. Okay. So, how we answered that question, hopefully, we used x equals negative b over 2a. Right, that would have been the easiest way to do it. And we would have subbed in our B value. So that would be negative 4 over 2 times negative, whoopsie, not negative 1, negative 2. And that would have given us an answer of 1. Okay, and then we would have had to calculate F of 1. So we would have subbed in times 1 squared plus 4 times 1 plus 16. And I agree with you, we would have got 18 as an answer. Okay, so the coordinates here would be 1 and 18. Lovely. Well done, everybody. That's great. Perfect. Good job. Nice. Okay. So if, again, if we just go back and we have a look at mark allocations, this question's out of 18. We've got three marks in 5.1 and two marks in 5.2. Another thing that I want to say just before I start on question 5.3 is be very, very careful, especially in this line over here that I'm busy highlighting in pink. Do not leave off the equals zero. Okay, that happens a lot with matrix. Um, we see it a lot in June. We see it fine in trials again. Um, often what they do in matric is that you get an accuracy mark on this line. So if you leave off the equal zero, even if you factorized correctly, you're going to lose that mark. Remember, you're solving an equation, so you cannot leave off the equal zero. Okay, I just see a couple of questions. Let's just take those before we move on. Amasle, what's up? Oh, sorry, ma'am. I forgot to lower my hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No problem. Okay. And then Amu? Do you want to ask something, Amu? Ma'am, it's actually about the question like before this. I was asking if there's still time later on in the lesson. Can you uh, do a question where you're solving for X for the question like log 2X and then open bracket three minus, three minus x, x equals yeah. okay all right um i don't know if i've got anything do you have a question like that that could be solved do you have an example of one that you want solved yes ma'am i do but oh okay I'm, yeah. all right um well i tell you i wonder if you could put it into the chat and we'll see if we can have a look at it okay ma'am Okay, Thank you. all right. No problem, Amo. All right. And Fahin, did you want to ask a question, Fahin? 
Ma'am, is this question which we're doing now in a matic question or is it like combination with grade 11 in the matic question? So, so this is a matric question. And then oh, what oh, you will see okay. here, Fahim, this comes out of a matric paper mm -hmm. um, because what they have done is they have combined functions with inverses. Can you see, look, if you have a look at question 5.5 and question 5.6, mm -hmm. can you see how they've brought the, the matric work into a grade 11 question? So, yeah, I mean, that, that's what you see a lot in matric is the sort of integration of grade 11 together with grade 12. Okay, sometimes yes. things are separate, mm. but a lot of the time it's 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 integrated, especially when it gets to sort of like your Euclidean ge geometry and stuff like that. So yeah, this is a this is a matric question. <laughs> Thank okay, you, ma'am. But you no know problem. I actually managed to solve this graph more better than last year because last year, you know what, my grade 11 much was very fragile. And now when I did it again, now it's getting more better. Absolutely. It's like with everything, the more we practice it, the easier it becomes, the more familiar we are with it. So absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You just got to, all of you just, you just got to keep practicing. All right. And Thank if you, all the matrix before pleasure, if all the matrix before you got through and you Linda got through and I got through, you guys will make it as well. Okay. So you just got to keep believing that and being positive. All right. So it's, writing it's down here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Okay, now the next question is writing down the range of F. So again, this is a knowledge type question um, that they would expect us to be able to answer. All right, so Latani says Y is smaller than 16. Okay, 16 is the Y intercept, but is it the maximum Latani? Is it the maximum of this function? Yes, Mikhail, it's fine if you use the quadratic function. Absolutely. Um, question on 5.1. Mikhail, go for it. You're welcome to unmute and speak or you want to put it into the chat. Uh, is it fine if you use the quadratic formula? Absolutely. In fact, um, Favor was just saying that she used the quadratic formula as well. Okay, so let me just say something else here that's also really, really important. Okay, if you use the quadratic formula, okay, you must make sure that you have showed that you have subbed the numbers into it. Okay, you can't just write y uh, x equals minus b plus minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a and then pick up your calculator, put your numbers onto the calculator and write down your answers. Okay, you've got to show that you've subbed into the formula because that is the mark that you would get over here. Okay, so if you didn't show your factors and you subbed into the quadratic formula, that's the mark they would give you. Okay, so make sure every time in maths, doesn't matter what section you are working in, if you use a formula, you must show that you have subbed your numbers into it. Okay, but yes, absolutely fine. You could have actually gone straight from this over here to the formula to the answer. Okay, so nothing wrong with that either. Okay, so yes, y would be an element of the real numbers. Okay, and I see a lot of people have put the correct answer into the chat. So here we would say y is smaller than or equal to 18. If you wanted to do this using interval notation, our brackets, we would say y is an element. Okay, remember our smaller number goes on the left, so that would be negative infinity, and our bigger number goes on the right, and that would be 18, and we would have a square bracket over there. Okay, so yeah, just be very careful about what, what gets a round bracket and what gets a square bracket. Okay, so a matle, yes, but the other way around. Smaller number on the left, bigger number on the right. Not that negative infinity is a number, but the smaller value on the left and the bigger number on the right. Okay, and then you are all good to go. Yes. Okay, Masejo, sorry, I've just seen your... Um, message here you want to unmute. Masejo, you should be able to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I wanted to ask how do we see the range, but now I got it. Thank you. You got it. You got it. Okay. All right. That's fine. I'm going to move it over so you guys can see uh, 5.4. And I also just want to acknowledge that I have seen your equation that you wanted me to solve. Where was it? Um, it was... I'm just going to write that down here. So it was log base 2, 6 minus x equals x. 
Okay, we'll talk about that now, okay, Amu? All right, so question 5.4, let's just scooch over a little bit and go and have a look, okay? So it tells us the graph of h of x equals f of x plus p plus q has a maximum of 15 at x equals 2. Determine the values of p and q, right? So now, all of a sudden, we go from questions that are uh, entry level, um, easy sorts of questions to now suddenly they start asking us something that's a lot more difficult. So again, I'm pointing this out to you because the first six marks were really straightforward. All right. If we want to get a better mark than six out of 18, we're going to have to be able to access these sorts of questions. Now, the other thing that I want to point out to you is that if you read a question like you've got 5.4 and it's not immediately obvious to you what the answer is, don't throw the rest of the questions away. Go and have a look and see if there's maybe not something else that you can go and answer. Okay, so don't just say to yourself, okay, well, that's it. I'm getting rid of five, seven, another 12 marks. Boom, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to try and answer. See if the questions that follow it, if it's possible for you to answer some of those as well. All right, now, <clears throat> they're giving us important information here. They are telling us that there is a graph, another parabola, and it is the graph of h of x. When they write f of x plus p plus q, what are they trying to tell us has happened or what's going on? What does all of this stuff mean? It means there's been some kind of transformation. What sort of transformation is this? There we go. All right, so it's a shift, quite right, Naledi. Okay, it is some kind of translation. They are implying that a translation has taken place, right? They want us to figure out whether this graph has been shifted to the left or to the right, or whether it's been shifted up or down. So when they tell us has a maximum value of 15 at x equals two, let me go back and go and have a look at our turning point. So what I could say to you about our graph of f, f has a maximum of 18 at x equals one. Does that make sense to everybody? So the graph that we are currently looking at, all right, our graph f, it has a maximum of 18 at x equals one, right? This particular graph that they're talking about, this translation has a maximum of 15 at x equals two. So in other words, we can, oh, let's see what you're saying. Um, no, was he? The graph has shifted p units to the left on the x axis and q values up on the y-axis. Yes, Nalwazi, you are absolutely right. You are on the right track here. Okay, so P is left or right, and Q would be up or down. Okay, so imagine this. We've gone from 1 and 15 to our new turning point, which is going to be at 2 and 15. So in other words, we've shifted from here to this graph over here. We've shifted it to the right, and we've shifted it down. It's now at two and 15, right? So they are asking us, so the red one is H and this one in black over here, that's our graph of F. So in other words, we have moved to the right and we have moved down. Okay, so now the values of P and Q, all right, let's talk about Q first, okay? Q is easier because we don't have to worry about opposite signs. We were at 18, we are now at 15. So what does that mean the value of Q is going to be? There we go. Okay, Nalwazi quite right. Nalwazi's got it. Okay, good Nalwazi, well done. Okay, so in other words, Q would be equal to negative three because we've gone from 18, sorry, we've gone from 15 to 18. Okay, so Q would be equal to 
negative three. Okay, so we would need to take three away in order to go from 18 to 15. Okay, as far as P is concerned, okay, we would need to take one away because we have moved one unit to the right. So remember with P, it's always the opposite sign. Okay, good, well done. Good, 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 good. Okay, so Q would be equal to negative three and P would be equal to negative one. Well done. All right, difficult question. Sure, not a problem. All right, so in other words, what they are saying is that we have now got a new graph, H of X. It's a translation of F of X. They've given us the coordinates at the turning point of H and based on the coordinates at the turning point, we are now comparing our coordinates at the turning point with the coordinates of, at our old turning point. So we're comparing one and 18 with two and 15. Okay, so we've gone from one to two, we've moved one unit to the right. Because we've moved one unit to the right, that's why it would be minus one. Okay, because it's the opposite side when we're shifting left and right. As far as Q is concerned, we've gone from 18 down to 15. So that would be three down. That's why we have taken three away. Why Q would be equal to negative three. Yes, Teddy, what's your question? Um, um, the way they asked it is actually um, kind of complicating because now we don't know mm. where to look by the um, original um, turning point. Mm. Absolutely. For example, for example, I said now um, Q will be 15 and, and P will be um, minus 2 because yeah. I looked at those values. Yeah, absolutely. So what they're actually doing here, Teddy, is that they're giving you the answers and they're asking you for the in-between bit. So in other words, it's almost like them, them giving you a question like um, one plus what gives you, I don't know, negative three or whatever. So they're giving you this bit, they're giving you that bit and they're asking you what's happening taking place in the middle. All right, so yes, this is a is a significantly more difficult sort of question. All right, I think the Q is also easier to understand than the P. Um, I think often with, with shifting left and right, it's difficult for us because when we shift to the left, we automatically want to minus. And when we shift to the right, we automatically want to plus, but it's the other way around when it comes to functions. Okay, all right. No, no they don't ask you, they don't ask you to plot the coordinates, Lito. I was just drawing them there, um, but no, that's not what they wanted. They just wanted the values of P and Q in this particular case. All right, um, I see that we are now running out of time. I tell you what I'm going to do, all right? Zintle, this question that you asked, okay, for us to solve over here, in the same way, so it's this one here, okay? If you were going to solve that, it would be 2 to the power of x is equal to minus x plus 6. Okay, because 2 is your base, x is your exponent, and 6 minus x would be your number. So now they're asking you to solve. No, Zechofat, so that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Again, okay, I see you, Len, just put that into, into the chat. Um, thank you, Yulinda. Anyone can grab, grab the quiz when you can. Yulinda, how would you solve this particular question? So 2 to the x equals minus x plus 6. Um, so if I have to solve for, I'll have to use lin actually, which I don't think. Yes, which I don't think that I was going to say you wouldn't be able no? to use anything else, would you? No, not at this stage. Yeah. Not at this stage. No. So you actually are. This wouldn't be part of the cap syllabus. Ma'am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ma'am, I was asking because it was on my school's like. Uh, uh, 
the school uh, campus or whatever where we learn from. And so yes. there was a question asking us to solve for X. So okay. Ask, and then, All okay, right. ma'am, you said two X, two to the power of X equals six minus X. So ma'am, what yes. happened to the that was on the right side, the right hand side before we did all of that. Because okay, so yeah, so in other words, what I did is I rewrote that in exponential form, but then I yeah. realized as soon as I had done that, that you actually wouldn't be able to use any of the concepts that you currently have in matric, if you're doing, yeah. a, if you're doing a cap syllabus, so this, this would lie outside of the cap syllabus, so if you're writing um, the, the, the NSC exams at the end of the year, they're not going to ask you to solve that, that question, um, if you were doing um, AP maths, then you would do, you would do, um, the men or the, yes, yeah. yes, you would do all those functions, but you're not going to do that in caps. Okay, thank you so much. Mark. Okay, all right.